Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden. And no, I didn't get in a fight. I had a little incident with a lead pipe earlier today. I'm doing some work on my family's house, tearing out some floors and walls and pipes, and one of them fell on my face. But I'm not making this video to get your sympathy or to show off my boo-boos. What I want to do is talk about leveraging emotions to help you get through challenging experiences. And the emotion I want to talk about here is anger or even a little bit of rage, which can be leveraged to your advantage in situations like this. So a lot of people think that there are good emotions and there are bad emotions or positive and negative emotions. In Buddhism, they talk about the afflictive emotions, anger, fear, anxiety, things like that. But from the perspective of evolutionary biology or modern neuroscience and psychology, we know that no emotions are bad or mistakes or negative. They all serve a purpose. And anger or rage can be a very useful emotion if contained and controlled and used in very specific situations for a short period of time. You can think of anger like gasoline. If you take gas and you pour it on top of the engine and light it on fire, not only is the car not going to move, but it's going to burn and maybe even blow up and somebody could be injured. Take the same gas, put it through the gas tank into a system that's been designed by engineers so that that combustion takes place at a measured rate with all kinds of safety hardware around it and the result is forward motion. Anger can be used the same way. If you just pour it all over yourself, well, that's not going to go well, but if you can constrain it, if you can utilize it to get through certain situations, it can be very helpful. So how that applied to me today, when the lead pipe hit me in the head and I could feel my skin tearing, there was an immediate sense of fear and uncertainty and oh no, I think those are the first words that came out of my mouth. Oh no! But then quickly, I gathered myself, I grabbed my eye, and I held it with a lot of force, a force of anger, a force of rage. And I did that on purpose. And there's a couple reasons for that. Because when you go into a state of anger, your physiology changes. And one of the things that occurs in those changes is reduced blood flow to your skin. Because when you're in a fight or flight situation, there's a good chance that you're going to be injured. You're going to get some flesh wounds, and we want to make sure that you don't bleed out. Your body is trying to protect you from injury when you're in fight or flight or engaging the sympathetic nervous system. So by going into that anger mode, I basically pulled the blood away from my skin, and I also blunted the pain. So instead of freaking out because of the pain and the blood running into my eye, that anger helped me to get through the situation, to calm down, to think clearly, to not be overwhelmed by pain or fear or doubt, and to reduce the amount of blood that I was going to lose. Because when I first got hit, it immediately started gushing. It was a spurter. So by going into anger mode and putting angry, hard pressure on it, I was able to reduce the blood in my skin, the pressure that I put on it, would have hurt like hell had I not been in anger mode. But as you may know, if you're angry and you touch a wound aggressively, the pain decreases. So once I got the bleeding to stop, I let the anger go, I calmed down, and I was actually joking about it. It became a fun thing that no longer freaked me out because I had addressed the situation. I wasn't going to bleed out. It's not as bad as my body initially made me feel like, oh no, the end of the world. And then I had it taken care of. So the point is that a lot of people try to suppress emotions that are deemed negative, but these emotions have value. They have situations when they're incredibly useful. And when you get injured, anger, not at someone, but just anger in general can be very, very useful to help you survive, calm down, think clearly, and get yourself to a place of safety. Okay? So let me know in the comments below how you deal with these so-called negative or afflictive emotions. Do you suppress them? Do you allow yourself to experience them? Do you project them onto other people? 
Or do you leverage them like gasoline inside of a modern internal combustion engine for forward motion? Okay? If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you soon. Bye. Yo, Adrian. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden, and I've got a little voice in my head that tells me that I'm not using the right words. So let's try that again. Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden, and no, I didn't get in a fight. I had a little incident that I want to discuss because I have no idea why do I want to discuss this? Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden, and no, I didn't get in a fight. I had a little incident with a lead pipe, let's just say. <laughs> and I think it's useful because... Because uh, it, it's useful. Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden. I had a little incident today and I want to talk about it because... Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden, and as you can see, I had a little incident today. I didn't get in a fight, but I might. So let me know in the comments below how you deal with these so-called negative or afflictive emotions, and that just hurt when I, I can't do that with my eye. <laughs>